Today, we're going to do a review of the Humseek 48 volt lithium iron phosphate server rack battery. So the vendor sent it over. They're going to get an honest review. So we're going to unbox this. We're going to look at the specs. We're going to completely tear it down and check the quality of the build. Then we'll do a capacity test and follow up with a summary. Let's begin. Here is what the battery looks like. It has all the specs that are on the actual unit. So this is a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. It does have a 100 amp BMS. It does have a few different protections built into it. So the first one is over current. So this will trip at 120 amps. So if you go above 120 amps, it should trip within 10 seconds. It also has short circuit protection, which is always nice to see as well. It also comes with communication. So as you can see, you have your RS-485 and your CAN connectors. It does also have your dip switches for configuring that. And then it has LEDs that show your state of charge. Okay, so here's the battery fully unboxed. See what you have here. So you have your negative connections on the left, positive on the right. You do have your RS-485 your R232, your CAN port. It does have main contacts here. You can see your LEDs, which show your charge status. Here are the dip switches. It does have a reset button, a power button, and a chint breaker, and this is a 125 amp breaker. On the top, it does say Smart Edition, so it does have Bluetooth on it. The BMS is 100 amp, as stated. Here is the side. It does have the anti-tamper, and it does say quality control pass on it, so we are going to open that up. On the back, it has the information for the company and for registering your warranty. Looking at the inside, it does look pretty tidy. As you can see, it does have balance leads for each one of the cells. You can also see that it has two temperature sensors, one here and then another one there. Each one of these cells is welded to the plate that's connecting the two together. You can see that it has this nice hump there, so it can allow for expansion and contraction. It also has the isolators or insulators, that is, in between each one of the cells. So the build does look like that it is pretty nice. It does label which side is the positive and the negative for each cell. Looking at the BMS, so it is HS-1001. It appears to be specific for this manufacturer. Now this BMS may work with some of their other batteries. What I did find interesting is it does have a few additional connections see heating, release, and Wi-Fi. So since it has this on here, I'm guessing this BMS can do some pretty cool stuff. And then here's your positive connection. Hopefully you can see that. Connects to your breaker. And then here's your negative. So overall, the build quality is quite nice. I mean, I really have nothing but good things to say about the build quality. The only thing that I'm curious on is the actual cells, but let's see how it tests out. I mean, after I charge this thing up, if the capacity is well past 100 amp hours, then, you know, maybe they're good cells, but just kind of curious on that, but we'll see how this tests out. So kind of excited. Let me go ahead and charge it up. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and do the capacity test. The load test is complete, and it was actually quite interesting. So as you can see, 103.28 amp hours, which is very, very respectable. It should do at least 100 amp hours. Best case that I've seen is like anywhere from 103 to 105, but 103.28 is very, very good. Tests higher than many of the server rack batteries that are out there. So quite nice. Overall impression, great build quality, good capacity. I like that it has a built-in circuit breaker on it. 
I do like the BMS that's in it. This is quite nice. Looks like it has some other features that just aren't turned on. Once again, you can see these open plugs that I talked about before. The wiring is nice and thick. You can see that it's all custom instead of just using a regular copper wire kind of connecting these up, but it's got an actual copper bar connecting up to the breaker. Does have heat shrink on it. Here's your ground as well. So the build quality is quite nice. You can see the negative terminals. Once again, there's the terminal and there's the copper bar connecting. And then for the positive, it's kind of tucked underneath. But once again, and look at the back of these terminals. So an issue that I've had with some server rack batteries is that you try to tighten it down a little too much and it just kind of spins and there's a nut on the back. Not with this, look at this. It is a solid piece of copper. This whole thing is not going to spin because the top and bottom are kind of tied into each other with that copper bar there. So this thing isn't moving. This is a very, very solid build. I'm quite impressed with it. I hate to say this, but this is better than Vatcher. And I think it's also better than the EcoWorthies. Looks like they definitely did not cut corners on this. So I would be more than happy to put together a rack of just these batteries just because of everything that it can do. Now, I didn't test the communications on it. I don't have communications set up on any of my systems. It's just not something that I'm personally interested in, but it does have communications on it. So that's it. Thanks again for watching Mike's Garage.